Today we're turning this into that. And I'm gonna show you how to install thin brick like a pro all next on Home Pro Hero. So I've got one wall left in my home office. Happens to be this one, and we're putting on what they call thin brick. Looks like a real brick until you turn it sideways. Thin brick is great, not only because it's thin and light, and it looks real because it is real, it's clay fired. It's the same thing as a regular brick. The only difference is it doesn't have the mass or the weight involved. And the beauty of it is you don't need a foundation to support it. All you need is a wall. If that happens to be concrete like the wall I have here, or any wall in your house, such as drywall. I'm super familiar with this product. I've installed it in my house a couple years ago here in the basement, and I fell in love with it. Some people call it baked brick or lick and stick. It's nothing like that. Now, the panels in the Lowe's and Home Depot's that are like four by eight, and they're a thin layer of plastic, I'm not sure what they are that looks like brick, that's a no-go. This is the go. First thing up is I have to go ahead and clean this concrete wall. You may have drywall, you won't have to do this. Let's clean the wall. Two tools to get this job done. Flat chisel, hammer. I'm also gonna use some tar paper that I had left over from the Sushi Bond project. So here's my brick. I actually got six boxes of this. I got two others over there. Um, you know, the worst part about this project is it's kind of expensive. It's about 70 bucks a, a seven square foot. So what tools do we need to put this on the wall? It's real simple. I use glue. When I installed it in other parts of my basement, I used liquid nails. This basically will bond concrete to mason or concrete to brick. Uh, when I did tests of this on the wall with the brick, it was incredibly strong. Other than that, let's go ahead and lay out the wall real quick. Super simple. Just gotta find center, run a line from bottom to top, and then we'll work off the line both ways. And I wanna make sure as my brick goes up that every other row, every other course, is actually on that line. The other ones will split. I'll show you when I start installing. Okay, the first course is dry fitted. I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and apply the glue and see how this works. I got these cardboard pieces. I want to just make sure this thing's level from left to right. Uh, I use cardboard just to kind of get it off the floating floor a little bit. Uh, it's just easy to slide in and out. So I'll use this for the first course only. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and, uh, I like to, we'll go a little slow at first, but I don't like to put too much of this on here. One, it's not the cheapest stuff in the world, but it doesn't really need it. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a few of these right now. All right. First one up. Okay, it's in place. Split the difference on this first one. Okay, so I cut some little spacers. I'll talk about these here in a minute a little bit more, but basically it's about three eighths of an inch thick. I'm gonna use that to make sure my bricks are spaced not only from course to course, but from side to side too. I have longer spacers for the uh, courses and these short ones just to kind of make sure it's lined up. Once I put the glue in the brick, it's not gonna go anywhere unless I just sit there and start tugging on them or something like that. Okay, I pulled out the laser to see how level I am. Obviously there's some that are off. Let's go ahead and address that now. So let you dry overnight. We'll tack this tomorrow. Okay, the first roof's been, well, sitting for about 24 hours, maybe longer than that, it's just the way my schedule worked out. We want to make sure those don't move, and you can tell that the glue is dry just by looking at it here on the wall. It's hard as a rock right there. Cut a bunch of these strips I'm going to use for spacers in between each course. I'll probably go four, five, six rows up, and then stop for the day. Let that dry, and then I'll continue up. So then all we're gonna do is just eyeball the first one. We put a strip in there. We'll go this way first. Eyeball the first one, get it up there in place. Now I like to double check this first one because it's hard to see where it lines up. I got two coming in. So let me get a tape measure. A lot of these bricks are roughly seven and a half inches long. So I need what, three and three quarters? I'm right on the money right there. Close enough.
Okay, cuts are super easy. All you gotta do is measure uh, each one. I usually deduct about a half inch. My gap's three eighths of an inch, so a half inch gives me an extra eighth of an inch on this side. So it's about right there. Just use this little hammer, and actually, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, put on the concrete. That's how easy it is. You're only gonna need a saw for like cuts like uh, where you get the notch or something like that. Other than that, this little claw hammer or mason hammer works like a champ, pretty straight. We'll let this dry for about 12 hours. I'll pull the six out in about six hours. Uh, but I did pick up an additional five boxes of this stuff. It's salty, $71. Uh, I get a 10% military discount, which helps out a little bit. So we'll see, we'll get done, I'll let you know how many boxes I used. And most importantly, how much it cost. Look, if you like these types of videos to improve the value of your property or house, it's real simple. You can support my channel by simply liking the video. And if you haven't already subscribed, push that subscribe button. Quick on both sides. First one, uh, just under 51 inches left. Jeez, 51 inches to go still. About 50, just under 51 also, so it's real close. And then the final check is, let me put the level across it, which is probably the most important check. That's on the money. On the money. Yeah, it's on the money on the line. So everything's going good right now. You don't want to lose track of level, that's for sure. I've done three courses so far. I did the first course, which was our foundation course. Let that sit for 12, 13, 14 hours. Then I did the next seven or eight rows up. I gave that overnight. And then yesterday I did the other seven or eight rows. Uh, I let that dry overnight also. So today I'm gonna to try and take it to the house, literally. I'm try to take it to the top. Then I hope to be grouting tomorrow. That's where the real magic happens. Let's get to work. and use the grinder to get this last cut right here. We'll see how it goes in there. Yeah, pretty good. It's not perfect, but uh, the grout will make it look pretty solid. So good enough. Double check, see how close we are. Down here on the end, we're about 16, right around 16. Uh, a little bit bigger than 16, and right at 16. Should be fine, it's probably that one board off a little bit. Be interesting to see how far we get up here. Um, I got what? 16, so I got about, man, it's gonna be close. It may fit. That may come real close to being a grout line at the very top, which I can work with that. I did that in the bathroom, so just keep our fingers crossed. You never know till you get to the end, really, unless you do all the math. And even when you do the math, sometimes it just doesn't work out. So I usually wait till I get close and make a game time decision on it.
real quick. Best last row ever. I got lucky. I mean, I measured from the bottom to the top and I came with a calculation before I started that would come out perfect at the top. Now, I guess. But I put this up there like that. I got almost the exact size of my 3 8 inch spacer, which is perfect. bricks are down we'll let them dry overnight and then we'll start grouting tomorrow morning here I'm just going with the standard mortar color which is a gray brown looking color uh, it's pretty simple to do uh, life in the bucket is a lot longer than life on the wall I'll show you why in a little bit but long story short it'll stay in the bucket by an hour or so probably longer now I don't know I never have an hour in an hour I usually have it on the wall by then but for the most part you're safe in the bucket you're not safe on the wall okay first thing is I start with a lot of water in the bottom not a lot enough water to get it going uh, you don't want too much because if you run out of dry and you have too much wet you got problems so always start with a little less water than you need and you can always add water later I just do some water in the bottom I don't know how much is in there I'm gonna dump a ton of this in here here put water in the bottom that way it doesn't stick to the bottom of the bucket and then uh let me get a battery for this thing and i got my drill i just got a, a real simple tile mixing bit on it nothing crazy just enough to stir it up so that's pretty soupy there way too soupy so i gotta make sure i add more dry i like to start out soupy because i don't want the water to get into the material pretty good right there so what I do is I for, for, for this runny mix this is a lot runnier than like mortar for a tile job but I like to take it and just shake the bit a little bit it falls off I'm pretty good um, oh heck I don't know what the consistency everybody always wants to say peanut butter cake batter whatever this is the consistency okay we'll let that sit for about five minutes just to make sure all the water gets into the dry uh, like I said you got plenty of time in the bucket not as much time on the wall 15 minutes on the wall an hour in the bucket if not more all right Pull it down a little bit, grab the side of it. It's kind of a dirty job, to be honest with you. Built full. I don't know too too much of it. The more you put in, the heavier it is. So it seems like it's harder to handle too. So I just fill it up by about halfway, three quarters maybe. And once you do that, you unwrinkle it. Grab it like that, and then twist it, get it nice and tight, like that, and then squeeze. Okay, we're loaded up and ready to rock. All you gotta do is just start usually at the top instead of the bottom because everything's gonna want to fall downward. So you kind of want your finished space above you, your non finished space below you. And all you're gonna do is squirt this stuff in modestly. Uh, it's sloppy. Be sure the floor is covered. Now, all I'm doing is twisting the bag and then squeezing the bag. So I'm making the bag nice and tight. And then that, I just give it a little bit of pressure and that squirts it out the tip. No science at all to this. You just squirt it in, kind of over squirt it. You're gonna knock it all off with another tool here in about 15, 20 minutes. So you can be really as sloppy as you want. The big key is gonna be, you know, when you get ready to knock off the ex excess uh, mortar is that uh, it's dry enough to do it. You don't wanna make a mess out of this. So really, you can be almost as sloppy as you want right now. Not a problem. You don't wanna to do too much at once either, you know, because you don't want the stuff to get away from you. I don't think it's possible. I mean, I'm sure it's possible, but You'd really have to screw up to let this stuff get away. All right, two tools for this job. Don't need this one right away. We'll need this when I'm done with this tool. This is the tool. You buy it at Lowe's, five bucks. It uh, makes the uh, it makes the chain on between bricks. It's pretty much all it is. I think it's three eighths of an inch. But, okay, so look, when I touch it, nothing comes off my finger. So it's definitely ready. It's still soft, but it's not it's not mushy. Um, so it's a two-step process. You push all of it in, and then you can pull back. The more you pull back and the harder you press back, uh, the more rough it gets. I kind of like a shiny or semi-shiny uh, mortar line, which is perfectly cool. It's really just 
whatever flavor you want. But I just smear it in there real good and pull back. Smear it in, that's it. Now you can, uh, sometimes I like to use this like this. I like to pull those middle joints right there. Push them down pretty good. I'm just trying to jam it in there. Pretty much it. Yeah, the mortar is about perfect right now. And you just play around with it. The final step after you tool the joints is basically just use this broom to finish out the joint. 45 degree angle and you just kind of go to town, make a big old mess. So you can see all these little bumps and stuff. You want to make sure it's dry. If not, you'll smear it on the front of the bricks and it'll look bad. See, I got a little wet right there, you can tell. That's all right. The rest of it's all good. That section's done. Let's move on to this section over here now. I like to do the top, all the top across, and then work my way back down here. It's gonna suck being down there, but it is what it is. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna smear it in. Gotta put a little oomph on it. Pull back. I like that. What can I say? It wasn't the cheapest project in the world, it's not the biggest project in the world, but actually, it's one of the easiest projects in the world. Really happy with it, turned out great, fits this room perfect, and not only that, it fits my basement perfect too. Next video, I'm gonna reveal this room, and we'll be done with it, and we're moving on to the next project. If you like this one, take a look at this one. It's good too. If not, take care.